Apple Books is Apple's ebook and audio service, but is it actually any good? And is it better or worse than other services like Audible and Kindle? Well, that's what we are going to talk about today. Hi, it's Kelly here, back with another productivity and planning video. If you're new to my channel, I really encourage you to stick around and join the community by hitting that big red subscribe button down below. So Apple Books, which I think used to be called iBook or iBooks, is Apple's version of ebooks and audiobooks and how they provide that everyone and it comes usually as standard on um, new Apple devices like iPads and iPhone. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to Apple Books is the app itself and actually this is probably my favourite ebook or audiobook app that I've ever tried in terms of the user interface and the actual app itself. So it's a really intuitive design, it's really sleek, it's honestly really easy to navigate and use. It's got tabs at the bottom which show you what you're currently reading, your library, the store where you can actually buy the books, audiobooks and it also has a search feature so you can look for the book that you want. The home screen is really great. It has an overview of everything, what you're currently reading, lots of suggestions that are applicable to you. The best part for me is if you click on the button that says browse sections, you get a full menu. You can navigate between them. You can look at genres. You can also look at what books are actually free and they switch around the free books quite often. So sometimes you can find some pretty good free ones or some good special offers like seals. And all of the books, audiobooks can, be um, read online or offline so you don't necessarily need Wi-Fi. So let's talk about the ebooks on Apple Books and then we'll come on to audiobooks. So with the ebooks there's lots of sections to look at. You can look by genre, you can look at what's new, you can also pre-order, so there's a pre-order section and of course you can search for a book really easily as well so if there's something specific you want to read you can look for that by either the title or the author and you can pretty much get any book. I've tried doing a few searches for different books that I like and I've been able to find all of them in the library so the library is huge. Now the price varies massively from uh, book to book and it really just depends on the size of it, how new it is, who the author is, how popular it's been, all of that stuff but Generally, most of them are between about five and 15 pounds, roughly. Whenever I kind of did a bit of an average, it seemed like the majority of them were around five or 6.99, um, with some being a little bit higher, some being a little bit lower, it totally depends. But you can also get them on sale for 1.99 quite often. They do 1.99 sales or 99p sales. So you can get some really good deals, you just have to keep an eye out for them. But when I compare them to Amazon, they're really quite similar. If you were to buy um, a book on Amazon, you're gonna get a really similar price. Now within ebooks you can add something to your want to read. So let's say if I navigate to a book I can add it to my want to read and what that will do is compile like a wish list of books without me buying them that I can come back to later. And once I've clicked something as want to read I'll see a sample appear in my library. So usually they just show you like the first chapter or they give you the first chapter for free to kind of like draw you in and lets you kind of see if you actually want to read that book or not. So that will show up in your library. Now if you wanted to, you can easily remove this. You click the three dots beside it and just hit remove. You also see under these three dots that you can leave reviews. You can also ask Apple Books to suggest more like this in the future. So let's say you read a book and you're like, oh, I really liked that. You can click suggest more like this. That will just mean that Apple will help to like enhance your suggestions so that you get suggested similar books. Alternatively, you can click that you didn't like it and they'll show you less of that kind of book. So when it comes to actually reading eBooks, the user interface, similar to the rest of the app, is really well designed. You can easily kind of swipe through to change the pages. You can change it to portrait or landscape, which is also really nice. And you can see the progress bar at the bottom to see how far through the book you actually are. There's lots of tools here as well. So you can change settings. So you can change the text size, make it bigger or smaller. You can change the color of the background, you can change the font and you can change the scrolling option. It also has a feature which I absolutely love which is called the auto night feature and this basically means that in the evening if you're say reading and it starts to get dark your screen will dim down and then it will eventually turn the background background <laughs> turn the background black so that it's easier on your eyes than if you're staring at a like bright white screen and it's dark and it's not great for your eyes. You can search for the part of the book that you want to go to, you can search for a page number or you can move between chapters using the bullet point feature on the left hand side. You can also add bookmarks if you want to like easily mark a spot although the app will 
come back to the page that you finished on anyway. So say I kind of stop reading, close the app. When I go back on, it will automatically go to where I left off anyway, but you might need to or want to add bookmarks to go back to things. So that's really what the eBooks are all about. Really great service for eBooks, absolutely love it. Now let's talk about audiobooks. And honestly, when it comes to the audiobooks, it's very similar to the eBooks. Pretty much the exact same process, but you click on the audiobooks tab, you can search for audiobooks there, and um, they have an amazing selection of audiobooks as well. When it comes to the price, most of them tend to be around $7.99. Now, if you have seen my Audible video, you will know that $7.99 is the price of a monthly subscription for Audible, and you get one book included in that a month. So $7.99 a month, one book. So this is kind of the equivalent of that basically, except you could obviously buy them at any time. It's not just once a month. Most of them do cost $7.99. They also do seals. There's quite a few on sale at the minute for like three or $4.99. So you can get them cheaper than that. Just depends on the book that you're reading. But typically most of them seem to be around the $7.99 mark. Now with the audiobooks, most of them are narrated by the author of the book, which is something I really love. And I've mentioned that before. I absolutely love when you can hear the person who wrote it through the book. That's one of my favorite things about audiobooks. So um, in most cases, it is the author who's narrating the books, which is great. Obviously where that's not possible, there's other narrators, but what I found so far is that they're all pretty good. The UI is very similar to that of Audible, to be honest, there's not much difference when you're actually playing an audiobook. Obviously you can skip forward and back 15 seconds. You can also swipe forward and swipe back to um, change where you are in the book, as well as being able to change the speed so if someone's a bit of a, a slow talker or a fast talker, um, you can change that if you want to. You can set a timer for when you want the book to automatically stop reading and you can jump around chapters as needed in the same way that you can in the ebooks. There's a couple of extra features I want to mention on here that I think make this app a little bit extra special that I really like. So you can send books and audiobooks as gifts to friends and family, which I think is such a nice idea. If you know someone's an avid reader and they use Apple Books really regularly, I think this is just such a nice present to send someone, even if it's just randomly they get a little notification that you send them a book for no reason. I think that's just such a, a lovely thing. The other thing you can do on this app is you can set a reading goal for yourself. So if if say your new year's resolution was that you wanted to read more in 2022 you can change that and uh, set what you want your reading goal to be for the day and it will track it for you automatically when you start reading a book and the last thing is that it also has that pre-order feature and i think that's really nice once the book has come out you'll get a notification and it'll go straight into your library and yeah i just love that feature i think that's a really really nice idea so overall i really really like the apple books app i've recently moved away from audible and kindle and i am actually now using the apple books app reason being that it brings both of those things together really nicely so i don't need a kindle app or an audible app i literally just have one app brings everything together in my opinion the audiobooks are really well priced and very competitive with what amazon has on offer and yeah i just genuinely think it's a really great app so i really hope that you guys enjoyed this quick overview of apple books let me know in the comments below if you have used Apple Books before or if you like it or don't like it. You can also go and check out my other videos about uh, audiobook services and reading services like the one about Audible and the one about Kindle Unlimited. So make sure you go and check those out and I will see you all in the next one.